morning everyone myself navyata ravi working as assistant professor in cyber security and data science in mlr institute of technology today i am going to deal with the topic logical database design the overview of this uh, topic includes entity sets to tables relationship sets to tables without constraints translating relationship sets with key constraints translating relationship sets with participation constraints translating weak entities translating class hierarchies and translating er diagrams with aggregation so these are the topics included in logical database design before going to deal with the, these topics we have to know we have already dealt about three levels of abstraction what are those three levels of abstraction physical level logical level and view level physical level logical level and view level so what is physical level deals with physical level deals with how the data is stored in a database that means what kind of data structures that we are using the internal details implementation details right what is logical level logical level deals with how the data is stored in the database in which format and the relationships among those data that deals with logical level so here physical level deals with the, what data structures we are using to store a data logical level deals with the, what kind of data that we are using that is nothing but in the form of in the form of tables or else some text images like that what in which format we are using to store the data that deals with logical level what is view level view level deals with the kind of user interaction with the database so this topic is related with the middle level that is nothing but logical level which deals with how the data is stored in the database that is nothing but in the form of tables so before going to deal with this topic we have already discussed about er model we have already discussed about er model that is nothing but entity relationship model so to represent this er model we use er diagrams so what are er diagrams entity relationship diagrams so which contains a set of entities and the relationships and different types of entities relationships and the attributes which we have already discussed very briefly in our previous slides so the next step is we are can we used to convert this er diagrams into logical database representation right so we used to convert this er model or else er diagram into a set of tables that is our main motive so here in dbms in the context of dbms representation of data in the form of tables is nothing but which we called as relation so what is relation here in the context of dbms please keep that in mind so what is a relation it is nothing but representing the data in the form of tables in the form of rows and columns that is what we called as relation our main motto is converting er diagrams into these tables into relations set of relations so next let us discuss each and every step which includes in logical database design coming to entity sets to tables so what is an entity it is nothing but a real world object which can be a living thing or non living thing that er diagram that entity can be transferred or else can be tran translated into a set of tables by using a sql query right so let us deal with a simple example converting this entity how to convert this entity set into tables let us consider one simple entity set that is nothing but a student a student so which consists of student id student name and student mobile number this is what we called as entity set so what is entity set here student is an entity entity set so which contains a, a number of uh, student profiles right so entity is nothing but a real world object that can be a living thing or non living thing what are the attributes here for simple for simplicity i have considered only three attributes right sid s name and s mobile number that is that represents student id student name and student mobile number here i can consider sid as primary key so i am representing i am underlining this one this attribute 
this represents that SID can be considered as primary key. That means we can uniquely retrieve the data by considering only this attribute SID. So, this is what we call as entity. Next, what are these? These are nothing but the attributes. These three are nothing but attributes. And we, ha we have already discussed different types of attributes also, different types of entities like strong entity, weak entity. What are the different types of attributes? Single attribute, simple attribute, uh, multi-level attribute, multiple level, at multiple attributes, right? So, here this is nothing but a multi-level attribute. Why? Because a student can have multiple phone numbers, right? So, that is why it is represented as uh, multi-level attribute. So, consider this entity set. Now, our job is to translate this entity set into tables. How? To translate this into tables, table representation. Why? Because we are dealing with relational DBMS. Why? Because we are de dealing with what? Relational DBMS. What is relational DBMS meant for? Relational DBMS meant for the data stored here is in the form of relations, is in the form of what? Relations. As I said earlier, in the context of DBMS, relation is nothing but the representation in the form of tables, right? So, our job is to convert the above ER diagram or else the above entity set into tables by using SQL, structured query language. So, for that, the syntax will be create table. What is the table name here? Table name is nothing but the student, the entity. Create table, table name. That is what nothing but student. So, with some attributes. What are those attributes here? Here I have represented only three attributes for simplicity. SID, student ID. Which is of which data type? You can prefer any kinds of data types that is integer, character, variable character, right. So, here I used to prefer int. Next, S name, this is another attribute which is of character data type. And next, the third one is S mobile number, this is also which is of integer data type. And here I used to represent SID as primary key. So, I can represent primary key of SID, which column SID. So, this is the basic representation, how to create a table by using or by seeing the above entity set, right. So, by creating, by representing in this format, the DBMS will return the output as follows, like SID, yes name, and S mobile number, S mobile number, right. So, to convert, to convert this ER diagram into a set of tables, we use SQL, we use create command. So, create command comes under what type of language? Here, we have already dealt the types of languages also. How many types of languages are there? DDL, DML, DCL and TCL. Here just we are defining a structure of a table that comes under DDL, data definition language. What is DML? Data manipulation language. If at all we used to manipulate the data or if at all we used to insert the data or we used to delete the data, then we use DML language commands. What is DCL? Data control language. We used to control the accessing of data of unauthorized users. So, here we have some of the commands. And uh, what is TCL, transaction control language. So, here these are different types of languages we used to represent. Now, let us go for relationship sets without constraints to tables. So, here also our main motive is to convert ER diagram into a set of tables. So, here I have represented a query. From this query, I can draw an ER diagram, right. So, what, what is the query here? Create table, study in. So, regarding here, they used to represent study in. This is what the, an entity or relationship. This can be an entity or relationship. So, the concept is converting, translating relationship sets to tables. That means, here we have to consider this one as a relationship. 
Why? Because it is related to converting translating relationship sets into tables. So, for example, student studying college. Student, student studying, student studying college. So, these are the two different entities and this is the relationship studying. So, here we are creating in the last slide we have created a table for an entity. Now, we are creating a table for a relationship. Right. So, here this relationship is related with the two entities student and college. So, create table studying with attributes. What are those attributes? Student ID college ID since. So, here since can be represented here since. So, student ID, SID, next college ID can be considered here CID. What is the primary key here? They have represented student ID and college ID. Student ID and college ID. Both are primary keys. Right. Next, apart from these, we can consider more number of attributes. Student ID, student name college ID, college location or else college name also we can able to uh, consider, right. So, in this concept, we used to translate a relationship set into a particular table. How? By using same SQL query. So, create table, table name is nothing but study in, which consists of attributes. What, what are the attributes that I have considered? SID, CID. Why? Because I have to consider the attributes from both entities. Why? Because a relationship is a, uh, a relation which maintains which uh, uh, what which maintains a relation of uh, uh, two entities, two or more entities, right? So here I can take the attributes or I can share the attributes from different entities. So in this particular query, I have uh, uh, represented SID from student, college ID from college entity. Since is nothing but what here, this is nothing but derived attribute. So, we have attributes, specific attributes for relationship also. For relationship also, those attributes are called as uh, uh, derived attributes. Here, since is nothing but a descriptive attribute. So, since can be considered as a descriptive attribute. Why? Because it is related to the relationship set. That is why it is nothing but descriptive attribute. Next. What is the primary key here? They have represented SID and college ID. So, here we can consider primary key from both the entities. What is the foreign key? Foreign key is a key which acts as primary key in another table. Foreign key is a key which acts as primary key in another table. Here, what the foreign key is nothing but student ID references student. That is nothing but in this, for this particular table, he is considering SID as foreign key, which acts as primary key for this table. That is why here SID be will become a foreign key. This SID acts as primary key for this student table. Why? Because to relate two or more entities, we use the concept of foreign key. Next, here we can take college ID is also a foreign key. Why? Because, so here we are representing, we are referencing this college entity, right? So, that is the reason. So, foreign key can be considered as a, a student ID and college ID also. So, next coming to translating relationship sets with the key constraints. So, what are the key constraints here? What is a constraint? Con constraint is nothing but our rules, our rules or regulations that we have to follow to maintain database consistency. So, let us consider this one. What is that ER diagram meant for? Employee manages department and employee works in department. Here we have two relationships. What are those two relationships? Managers and works in relationship. So, the first part represents, the first part represents, we have already discussed these things in our previous sessions also. If at all you want um, more, much more explanation, you can refer those videos. Employee manages department. What is this arrow mark meant for? This meant for 
each and every department must be managed by at most a single employee that is the uh, representation of this arrow mark why because each and every department will be managed by only single hod we, do, we must not have multiple hods for each and every department so that is the reason we we used to take this example each and every department must be managed by at most one employee that that representation will be done in this manner this arrow mark represents the uh, the exact meaning right and let's discuss the second part let's discuss the second part that is nothing but this one employee works in department number of employees can works in number of departments am i correct so all the employees works in all the in all the departments for example one faculty can deal with uh, the in the department of data science and uh, in the department of uh, cyber security also right so that is the meaning for the second part so how we can able to translate this kind of relationship sets with key constraints what are the key constraints here we already discussed that is nothing but what is primary key foreign key primary key foreign key apart from these two uh, not null unique so these are some of the uh, key constraints by considering these key constraints how we can able to translate this er diagram into uh, set of relations that is nothing but tables so if at all in for this one we can create uh, two types of tables for managers we can create one table and for works in also we can create one table so let us deal with manager create table create table managers which consists of as this is a relationship we have to include attributes from both the entities that is from both employees and departments so create table managers and here let us consider this number as employee number so employee number of integer data type next let us consider department name from this entity department name of character data type which represents some size 20 right and let us consider primary key primary key of what uh, employee number primary key employee number next foreign key here we can consider foreign key as a, what e number employee number references this e number references which table employees table references employees table so in this way we can create a table for the managers and here the arrow mark represents what for each and every department only one employee will manage just like hod keep that in mind next what is the second part represents so this the thick line the thick line represents what total participation and the thin line represents what partial participation so what is total participation if all the entities in the entity set participates in a relation then it is nothing but total participation right so here consider the second part for each and every for this entity employees each and every employee works in departments in each and every department or some of the departments that means here total participation has been done what is here what is the meaning of this one each and every employee manages a department no right only one employee manages department so that's why here thin line has been drawn that is what the basic difference thank you